Hey everyone, Melanie Minshinger here. I have a new project for you today and I'm going to be doing a short demonstration with a watercolor pencil technique. I'm going to be demonstrating some products also that I got from a company that is new to me that I discovered recently, Arteza. Now they have sent me some of their products in exchange for my honest review. I am so thrilled with them and looking through their website, I found a lot of other things that were really different from tools that I already have in my toolbox. So I'm gonna be sharing about them as well. Please watch till the end because I have a discount code for all of you if you want to give them a try. So today's project, I am going to be demonstrating this card right here. This is with my Lotus Blossom from my very popular A Year of Flowers stamp set. This is an elemental stamp set that you can create year-round cards with all these different seasonal flowers. Comes with the flowers and then different stems and leaves so that you can make your own arrangements. So today I'm going to do this purple flower. Let me know in the comments if you want to see how I do the rose. So let me put this aside. When you're doing watercolor and you wanna use a watercolor pencil and some watercolor paper because this is gonna really help move that color around more than it would a smooth cardstock. Let me show you these watercolor pencils here really quickly. So the colors that you have are all shown on the back. I like that they have a name and not just a number. That really helps me remember what color I'm reaching for and it's very descriptive of the different color that is inside the tin. I also really like that the tin lid is hinged. My Prisma colors, my son borrowed a couple years ago and the lid is missing and as a result, I don't ever take them anywhere because I don't have anything to close it up with. So that's a nice feature. You can also unhinge it though if you need to. So it comes with three different trays. Now they came in a different order than this. There was kind of a spectrum in each one. I've got the neutrals here on the bottom. But I really like to put all the reds together, all the yellows together, and so forth, so I can see all the different shades that I have to work with. I love the names. Opening this up is kind of like getting a brand new palette of fancy makeup with names like Blueberry, Pink Macaroon, Flamingo, Fruit Punch. Just so fun. Um, they have a really thick core. Um, so it's going to last a really long time. They're very easy to sharpen and they have a really creamy lay down. I'm going to show you the chart that I made here really quickly with their watercolor paper. Now this is their expert level. It comes with 14 sheets in the pack. It's 9 by 12. If you're not going to be doing large paintings and you want it more for cards, this is one that I did with my Stately Flowers 5 rows, then I would recommend maybe getting a different level, maybe a more um, value priced cardstock because this is extra thick and it's two sided so that you can use both sides of it for studies. But for cards like I did here, what I'm going to be doing today, I have one sheet cut down to three by four inch mats so you can get three, six, nine different pieces, nine mats out of just one piece of paper. Um, so that's gonna work really well for card making. So it's a nice bright white. I noticed some of my other watercolor papers I've had in the past are a little bit more ivory. So I really like that. This is a color chart that I made by doing rows of six by 12. So you're gonna have all 72 colors on here and I just did one inch each by one and a half to get all 72 colors. So you could print out a chart, but I really like just making the chart on my own and having it on the watercolor paper so that I can really see what it's going to do on this paper. So what I did here is I just colored on just a little bit. Let me grab one of the pencils here. I'll grab this indigo. So I just shaded some of the pencil into the left corner and then I just brought that water on there with my water brush out to the edge and you can even go all the way out to clear paper so it blends really nicely. Now another product that I got that I was really excited about and I hadn't seen anywhere else, I've been using water brushes now for probably 12 to 15 years but I've only ever had one size and it was just a fine tip. So they actually sell an assortment that has six brushes in it. You've got three sizes of a fine point and then three sizes of a thick broad brush and this is really nice for washes. It also holds a lot of water in there so that is going to keep you from having to refill it as often but you're just going to press the button to release some of the water 
and so it works just like a brush but you don't have to worry about spilling a cup or making a mess and you can take this with you so you can see how vibrant and gorgeous that color is and then you just bring that out beautiful color so you're not going to get the same kind of blend on a piece of regular cardstock. Now they also have a tin of regular colored pencils. I found that these do blend a little bit with water, but that is not the intent of these. So if you want to do water coloring, then I recommend that you get the watercolor pencils over the colored pencils, but they do have both options. Now I also want to point out that they have the same colors that they do in the colored pencils as they do the watercolor. The way that you can tell them apart if you have both so you don't have to worry about getting them mixed up, the colored pencils have a round barrel and it's got two fine lines on there as though you're drawing with it and the watercolor pencils actually have one thick line on it that makes me think of the wash and it's also got a little picture of the water brush on there or paintbrush. So that's very helpful. I want to also point out, I don't know if you noticed, but has a nice, bright, large font print on there for the name. And I like that because I have a hard time seeing a smaller name on the pencil when I'm demonstrating and then I end up not doing it in videos as often. Also want to show you just a sample really quick that I did here. And this is in a coloring book of Psalms that a friend of mine gave me. So this I just did with the colored pencils. And so this is without doing any blending. But if you want, you can come back on and do one of these pages with the exact same colors in that watercolor tin and then take one of the paint brushes and then do some blending on the paper. So really beautiful colors. I'm excited to have these because I've never had as many watercolor pencil options I, as I have with this particular set. I also want to point out another thing that I got that I thought was really fun from Arteza and it's these precision eraser kit pencils. So it's like eraser in pencil form and it comes with this sharpener and I've really been loving using this sharpener with my colored pencil. It's so sharp. I haven't had any problem with the leads breaking. So you would just sharpen this like a regular pencil and then you have the nice brush on here so that you're not smudging your work or dirtying your hands. So let me show you. This is really nice not only for if you need to erase just regular pencil marks but also if you wanna do little highlights, if you've done some shading. So it's going to remove just very specific areas and it's nice having a long barrel. Oops, dropped it. Nicer than having just a little small square eraser. So I'm really enjoying having these to work with. And I do find that obviously as an illustrator, I do a lot of drawing, not just stamping, but I do like to sometimes have a pencil to do maybe round or curved lines when I want to do a butterfly trail that I'm stamping or maybe sketch a pencil line so that I can have a straight greeting and then I go back and I remove that later. And then I'll show you that you can just take this and then just sharpen it down and you have a fine point. So that's a really fun product. I had never seen that anywhere before, so I'm really enjoying using those in my collection. All right. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stamp out this lotus. And the ink that I'm going to be using today on this sample that I showed you, this was a no-line coloring technique, which means that you do a very pale ink for your stamping so that you're not going to see that like you would a very bold illustration. Here's one I did just to show you the difference. This is done with the Gina K Jet Black Amalgam ink. This is elements from my Puppies Galore set. For this one, I only used one pencil. And so I used this charcoal here. And that's another thing that I really like about watercolor pencils over markers, that with just one pencil shade, you can get all of the different shades that you need rather than needing three or four grays. So, but I'm not gonna use the black today. I wanted to just really focus on that color. For this, I use the Whisper. And that is another one of her amalgam inks that is specifically formulated for doing no line coloring that's going to fade 
with your coloring, but it's very difficult to see on the video. So I am actually going to use one of her ink cubes to do my stamping. This is the soft stone gray, and that'll be a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to use the Misty for my stamping, and that way I can stamp it a couple times. This does have a little bit of a texture on it, like a fine art paper. It's so beautiful, but it might not pick up every line in a detailed image, so you might want to stamp it more than a couple times. So this is with the Mini Misty. I'm going to put this here right in the corner, and I am going to take my different images. So I'm going to start, I always start with the flower first, that largest image. So I'm going to put that right about, little hair stuck to it, put this right about here, and I'm going to put down the magnet to keep that from moving, and I'm going to ink this up with my gray cube. And because my colors are pretty dark, you're really not going to see these lines as much, but I just want you to see them as I'm coloring and where I'm putting that pencil. Okay, now and that's that's good enough. I don't think I'm going to need to do that again. I would with the whisper though, probably. And then I want to take this larger stem. So you see, you can make it going to the left or flip it over and go into the right. So I'm going to have this pointing off to the left and imagine that my light source is coming in from the right side. And I want to point that just so that that is going right through the center of the flower. Put the bar down to keep that there. I had to move it up a little bit just to make room for the bottom of that stem. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in one of these leaves. You have an assortment of leaves here. You're not really limited to a certain one. And this doesn't have to be a lotus. It can look like many different types of flowers from that side view, just something that's big and full and showy. Okay, and then if you want, just to save time, I'm just gonna do the one flower, but then I also have this little one that looks like a little bud, and then I used that smaller stem for it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this out this aside and I'm going to get my water brush and the colors that I want to use for this let me show you my color chart again I am going to use this amethyst and I'm also going to take the blueberry just to add in a little bit of a darker blue there and then for the greens I am going to use the forest green and I think the matcha Okay, so I've got the forest green over here. I just love this big bold print and the words. All right, so I'm gonna keep this up here just so that you can see where we're going. And when you have all these fun shades, it always adds a lot of depth and interest to pull in more purples, but I'm just wanting to show you this um, a little faster. Let's see how much time that we have. There's that blueberry, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start by just tracing the underside or the bottom of those petals where you wouldn't see the light and where they overlap one another. And another thing that I like about pencils is that you can add those fine little details that you get on flowers, like those little veins and the little crinkles to make it look like crepe. Okay, and so I'm just gonna pull that up and then I'm gonna also do that with my brush. And if you're out and about sketching or coloring, it's a nice thing you can just fill in the color and then do the water later. You can do it in stages. You can add water and then wait till it dries and then put in more color. I'm just going to put a little bit under there where that's folding over so you can see that. So you want to leave some white space and you can always go back and add more. Okay. 
And then I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna add some of those little veins over it and add some of the blue. And then for the green, I'm gonna put that in here. So it's gonna be darkest underneath where that flower is. And then you're gonna see some of that lighter green on the sides. So we're gonna have the most, the darkest green there and then down the side of the petal. And then I'm gonna put some here in the center and then just pull that up towards the top. Be a little here. This is where this flower is then casting a shadow down onto it. So you're gonna have an open spot there. And then I'm gonna put on some of this lighter green. Okay, all right, so let's start adding some water and just see where it goes. And you can use, as you see, you could have done that lavender one, but I really like to start with that darkest color because you're just gonna have a lot more depth and interest with those darker shades on your flowers. So start with the darker one, even if you want it to be mostly lavender, that's my recommendation. So I'm using a very fine tip here just because I want to be really precise with these small petals, but if I wanted to save time, I could use a larger brush. And I'm really liking having a really, really fine one here just for making little tiny strokes or it's nice for little hairs or fur or blades of grass. I might even add some of those. I think I will actually with that green pencil just so that you can see how nice this brush is even if you're not filling in an image. So I always want to work up in the shape or the direction that that petal is going. Go under here just a little bit. Make sure to save some white space. Put some in here, up here. Do that one. So relaxing painting with water. You've got to try it. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to do this green. So this is all just blending in. And I'm going to add, I forgot to add that lighter springy green of the matcha on that those petals underneath, those leaves underneath the flower. Okay, and then over here. And if it starts to not move as much as you want it to, then you probably just need to add a little bit of water, but only do a little bit at a time. And I like to turn my paper, just sometimes it's a little bit easier to paint in one direction than the other for me. Remember to leave some white space on that leaf as well. Go back in. I'm gonna show you how you can also add a little background there if you notice that yellow one that I brought over. Just to add some interest to this mat. So I'm going to go in with this blueberry, like I said, and just add just a little bit here. And it's just creating kind of a periwinkle tone. And I'm even going to put this blue over that green and it's just going to really unify the colors. So just under here. Your eye doesn't read it as blue. It's just, it's like it's reflecting that flower. So pretty. Okay. And then if you want to, like I said, you can come up and you can add, just trace over 
those little veins in the flower. Go back in and Okay, so that's all I'm going to do on the flower. It's going to turn out different every time. I can blend this maybe a little bit more so that you don't see those lines on the edges of the petals. And when the paper is already wet, that pencil, when you lay it down, when you add it on top of it, it just melts right in. You don't even have to press. So that's really nice. It's easy on the hands. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I want to use a dark yellow that's really going to contrast nicely with this purple. I'm going to take, this is the cut line and I'm just using it like a straight edge. This is from My Sweet Petunia. And so I'm just laying this on here and I am just going to trace a box with this sunflower around the flower. And so I'm just putting it, just putting that line right over it so you can see exactly where you're going. I'm gonna go around the stem so it looks like it's extending off of my mat. And each time I'm putting the edge of the mat up against this line right here. So I guess that's exactly an eighth of an inch. And then here. All right, so I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a different brush just so that it's nice and clean. I don't have that blue and purple on it. I'm gonna take the bigger one here. So this is still a fine tip, but this is the largest one. And I'm just gonna start just tracing over that with the brush. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. And so it's going to get brighter at first when the water starts to mix with it. And then it's going to fade. And you can bring this in as much as you want. Or you can let it be a little bit more defined as a border. And I have another sample that I can show you where I did two colors, a pink and then a purple, and then I had the meat in the middle, and it was just a seamless blend. And you're going to get a little bit of that when you go around it. If you want to add a little bit more on here, go back in and just smooth that out just a little bit. And then if you want to add a greeting, you can use this amalgam ink for that. It's very dark. and gives you nice, crisp details. I'm gonna just use a little block for this. So I'm gonna put this up in the corner. So I have For You and With Love in that stamp set. And I'm gonna put it right about there. And that's it. So I'm really excited about these pencils. I'm really excited about the water brushes and the paper. Arteza has given me a coupon code for you to use for a limited time for 10% off. It's just Melanie Minchinger one Be sure to just copy and paste that so that you get the spelling of my last name right. Check it out and also make sure that you try out, this is the other one that I did where I did just a little bit more blending with that yellow. I might keep going as I keep talking. Another thing that I really like about Arteza, they had super fast shipping. They have a guarantee on all their products for satisfaction guaranteed, which is great. And they have a loyalty program, which I love. So you get points for every single dollar that you spend with them that's going to help earn more supplies. They've got a birthday club where you get reward points on your birthday. 
and they reward you for sharing on social media and referring friends. So that's just a really nice way to thank customers and a really fun way to shop. I hope you'll check them out and see other products that they have available and check us out at our Gina K Design store for all of our different stamps. Oh, I mentioned this particular one. This is one that I stamped on with my Women of Faith set. And so I just used, let's see, I grabbed the orange for one side and then I used the fuchsia on the other side. And I just love how seamlessly that blended in the middle without any coloring on my images. So thank you for watching today. I'm going to be doing more demonstrations and tutorials using more Arteza products in the future. And so we'll be able to stamp, color, and card make together. Thank you for watching today. God bless.